it by rebar. He has a little mishap in an alley. And then he, he sneaks over to the hospital and he tries to find like a room alone and he, and he starts gulping down bags of blood. He's trying to heal himself. I actually drank a full bag of blood like that. And it's like it's like drinking like a tube of toothpaste. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's really kind of thick and minty and I think it made my breath wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it, I definitely felt sick after that. Yeah. Because, you know, someone was... Someone on the set was giving me crap. They're like, oh, you're just really skippish with your blood. You seem all sick now. And I'm just holding up an empty bag. I'm like, <laughs> give me the next one. I guess starting off, I did watch those two episodes of the of the British version. So I have to say that when I was thinking of Rebecca off the top, I was imagining um, the British version um, and really trying to tap into the essence of that character. Um, and at the beginning, I did buy like a huge book of vampire mythology and was flipping through it and reading it and trying to digest it all and then and trying to figure out how I was going to incorporate all of that into what I was doing and then I realized eventually that the vampire will kind of make itself <laughs> it will come out of you uh, and and you can just work on like being human <laughs> <laughs> And, and 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 yeah, and that will come. I think that was that's one of the most interesting parts of the show for me is that I didn't have to play a vampire. I had to play a person dealing with some stuff. So that was cool. Major stuff. But your character goes to so many different places, you yeah. know, just from evil to confused to, to like a goo she's a, you know the victim at first, and yeah. then she's then super aggressive. Yeah. yeah, and then she's you know. Right. Just sorry and guilty, and then she's you know. You helpful. wish you had more episodes to play with because you know, like for her her character, we we see her in the beginning, and then we we forget the first episode takes place over the space of a month. So Bishop's been working on her for a month, you know, when she's killed dozens of people and she's really just messed up in the head. And every time you go away, something happens and you come back with a different with a different yeah. Kid. Um, for me, um, when I read the script, one of the or the two, uh, they gave us the first two scripts to, to get a feel for what the series was going to be. In. I fell in love with the script, so what I loved was that if you took out the, the word vampire or werewolf or ghost, the script still worked. And so when I read the script, I really felt like, okay, well, my job is to play a man who's battling addiction. That's, that is my job. I will do that first and foremost. In terms of my knowledge of vampire lore, it did occur to me, like, yeah, maybe I should research my stuff. And then I thought, same way as the British series, I'm like, I'm staying away from the British series, what if I stay away from all the vampires? Because I haven't seen Twilight, or I haven't seen um, <laughs> Vampire Diaries, or, or True Blood, I haven't seen any of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, um, I decided that I was just going to kind of do it based on what I thought, and, and uh, hopefully, that would be uh, an original take on it. I actually don't have a sense as to how original my take is based on what other people are doing, because I don't know what they're doing. I hope it is. Um, but I definitely, put a, on top of the addiction thing, which was primary objective is addiction, right? Play, playing a recovering addict and trying to find as many opportunities to bring that metaphor to the surface. Uh, secondary objective is to really think about what it might be like for a guy who is 250 some years old you imagine that, that this guy had seen a lot of things. He'd lived many, many different lifetimes in many different ways. And, and, uh, and so he would have a wealth of knowledge and experience. And, and you would imagine that someone like that would be a little bit jaded, hard to get a rise out of, you know, like slow to laugh or smile, you know, just kind of, just kind of a little bit detached and, and maybe a little bit aloof. And so I, there's that element of the character. But the trick is, that Aiden, if you go with the metaphor, has spent most of his life in a drug case. He's been spent most of his life as an addict. So he does not have the uh, psychological tools to deal with what's going on with him. So in that way, the character was very youthful. He's like kind of coming out of it, 
re uh, his emotions and his humanity are reasserting themselves. So things like, for example, Bernie when he was injured, make him freak out. He he can't handle that emotion. So in that way, the character is very youthful. He's kind of he hasn't dealt with these things for over 200 years, and now he's forcing himself to look reality in the eye and deal with it, rather than dive back into the addiction when the going gets tough. So that that's a really fun element of the character, is that he's just not ready for any of this stuff. And that's why the show happens to begin with. The show happens because he says, hey Josh, wouldn't it be cool to have an apartment? But what he's really saying is, I, I can't do this. I need I need someone to keep an eye on me. I can't I can't do this alone. And then they happen to move into a haunted house. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the way I, I look at the character. 